Fala galera, bem-vindos para mais um vídeo aqui do canal. Hoje a gente vai fazer uma coisa diferente. Nós vamos ter o nosso primeiro talk show, o nosso primeiro bate-papo frente a frente aqui no canal. E para fazer isso acontecer, ninguém melhor do que minha grande amiga de infância, Patrícia Guimarães, que veio de onde, Patrícia? Denver, Colorado. Direto de Denver, para bater um papo aqui comigo sobre o processo de aprendizagem do inglês, as dificuldades, experiências de quem mora fora, enfim. Então, espero que vocês curtem e tirem proveito desse vídeo. Vamos lá? All right, guys, so we're back here, and right off the bat, I just want to let you know that this video is going to be 100% in English, so you can practice your listening, okay? So, Patricia, tell us a little bit about yourself. But before that, what do you want to be called? What do you like to be called? Patricia? Trisha? Pat? What is it? <laughs> um, what is so, it? in the U.S., people call me Patty. And Patty. Uh, yes, not to be confused with hamburger patty, which is another word. <laughs> But Patty to me um, sounds Patty. like an old woman's name, like Miss Patty, like my former math <laughs> teacher, like Miss Patty. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. For me, if uh, my mom calls me Patricia or Patricia, it sounds serious, but Super. I like it. I think when I'm, uh, I don't know, in more uh, professional settings, I go by Patricia. Patricia. And okay. my friends in more informal by Patty. Patty. I just got used to it, but in the, in the beginning it was weird. Right. I have an American cousin whose name is Patricia, and we call her Trisha. I think it's cute. Trisha. Hi, Trisha. Come over here. Yeah. But, all right, so we'll go with Patricia. Patricia. Okay, because this is a serious... Sounds good. This is a serious <laughs> channel, guys. So, yeah. so, Patricia. Um, so, tell us, uh, what do you do now? What do you do for a living? Sure. Well, before that, thanks so much for having me here. Thank you. And, uh, awesome. But, um, so, like, do you want to know how I went to the U.S.? Or what no, do what I do, do now? What do you do now for a living? Yeah, sure. What do you do, uh, yeah, anyway. So, sure, I'm venturing uh, in entrepreneurship. It's a tough word. <laughs> Entrepreneur, entrepreneurship. <laughs> entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, Crazy one. Yeah, I'm trying to start a business. Um, yep. I'm in the startup world. And uh, I have a software company. And what we do is mobile applications, um, what is it? What is it called? systems, Tech Festa. Tech Festa. I had to leave the Portuguese in there. Yeah. Right? The Brazilian. She likes the, she likes the party. She's a party animal. <laughs> no, she's not. But anyway. I like to party, yes. <laughs> we like to party. No, anyway. Uh, yeah, we, before you continue, the reason actually why Patricia is here today is because I was looking for a company that makes apps. So I got in contact with her. And we talked for a little bit. And the funny thing was that we talked in English. It was so funny because we... A little bit mixed, right? Like Portuguese Yeah, the last time we talked was like a long time ago in Portuguese. And then all of a sudden we're speaking English, in English. you know, <laughs> over like a Skype call. So it was pretty funny. And that gave me an idea, uh, and, you know, after we talked for like an hour or so. I don't remember exactly the time. But I said, hey, Patricia, why don't we shoot a video for my that's channel, right. you know, speaking in English so you can participate, whatever, tell your story. So that's why she's here right now. Right? So anyway. Yeah, thanks for having me here. Right, this no is problem. awesome, really cool. But yeah, my um, that's what I do now. I'm, you know, venturing into um, being a business owner mm -hmm. and um, it's going well. Uh, we are in the market for a year and a half now. Okay. And we do, um, you know, s systems for our clients. So not just websites and mobile apps, but sometimes it's like what's called a client portal, uh, login systems and all of that. So you're like the CEO, the founder and everything of the company? My co-founder, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, oh, no, not geez. like that yet. Not like that yet, <laughs> but someday, yes. All right. I hope so. And you went to the US, uh, Not year? to stay there 14 years. I went to for an exchange program to stay one year. Okay, that yeah. was the first plan to just go yeah. for a year. Yeah. And then what happened <laughs> 50 years after right? that? <laughs> no, I, so I went through an exchange program. And uh, so the way it works, well, for my program 14 years ago, you get matched with a, with a few families and then you get to choose the family you want to go to. You choose. You choose. Okay. Yeah, I choose. 
And then I have family members in New York and Florida at the time, California. Also, I did want to go to California. Right. I was going to say that. Did that you part. choose it based on like family <laughs> principles or just right. like the, the place? The like California, yeah. Malibu, San Diego. That would be and, nice. You know. I love California. Yeah. But, um, but you ended up going to Denver. Denver. Denver I didn't even know is where a lot Denver than they wouldn't even put a map of Denver here, you know. <laughs> well, I used to live in Chicopee, so... Oh, that's right. We did, yeah, Chicopee we did. is not in... Like, you can't find Chicopee at all. No maps would show Chicopee. Chicopee. Denver, yeah. You know, because we had the cartoon, like, Denver. Like, oh, the dinosaur. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys remember that? I Denver, oh, dinosaur. South Park. Also, they talk remember about South Park? Yeah, cartoon. Of course. Yeah. I think South Park is in Colorado. Oh, really? Like the all the episodes city, and everything. South Park. Really? Wow. I think so. Well, we, but we I will Google to... that. We will Google. Right, but I used to live <laughs> next to Springfield. Yeah. Oh, Gar uh, no, 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 Simpsons. Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, but it's not the official Springfield from the Simpsons. Uh, but anyway, yeah, they had a thing like a. We're getting the. Yeah, they had to stuff. choose the Springfield. For the movie when the movie came out oh. so they did a little like like a competition kind of thing really and my springfield didn't win so oh. we're not officially the springfield from the simpsons, from so, the simpsons. Bummer. Yeah. but however like the uh men in black the movie uh-huh the guy talks about chicopee really can you like really i i when i was watching he was like oh spalding is like the company for the basketball uh -huh. like the balls for the basketball Be because today i don't know the exactly the brand they use but before all the basketballs were <laughs> from spalding uh, and that was from chicopee and oh, wow. the factory is spalding is a big company spalding yeah. yeah it was right next to my house and uh the the factory is like abandoned like oh, nobody wow. goes in there there's nothing happening but the guy from the movie man in black if i can find the footage or something i'll show you guys here but Check it out. He That's talks cool. about Chicopee, guys. <laughs> you said you had a gift for him. That baseball, for instance, thrown for the last out of Game 5, manufactured in 1962 by the Spalding factory of Chicopee, Massachusetts, was aerodynamically flawed. <laughs> but anyways. So but as, yeah, at the time, I didn't. I really had to go look in the map because you, I don't know, you, at the time, New York, you know, people knew about it, California, Texas, but I didn't know where Dem Denver was. Yeah. Anyway, anyways, so then I. Yeah, my, my dog touches <laughs> this thing. <time. laughs> my dog. Stop holding is me. Biting I'm making out here. with my leg. Come over here. <laughs> So guys, this is the one. <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> this is the guy who's been giving us hard time right here. He's been like eating, shoes. literally eating our shoes. Right, baby? Oh, right, baby? So Look cute. at his tie, guys, from Batman. Batman movie. He's so cute. All right, so you want to be in the movie, so you stay right here. There or, you go. Not in the movie, but in the in the video. Anyway. YouTuber. Yeah, there you go, guy. All right, so what were you saying? So, um, Denver, right? Why yeah. Denver? Um, so I wanted to go to a city that I didn't know anybody. I did. I wanted to be immersed in the English. And I knew if I went to New York or Florida or California, which has a lot of, you know, okay. a bigger population and of Brazil. And when you meant by uh, that you wanted to go to a place that you didn't know anybody, she meant like Brazilians. Brazilians, basically. yeah. So she wouldn't be speaking Portuguese every day, all day. Right. Right. Because right. you sort of like wanted to know somebody, right? <laughs> you didn't want to be alone. In the right. City, yeah. Right. I, I did Besides go with the, the family. Right. I did go with the host family already, you know, with a place to live, you know everything but i did i wanted to be on survival mode because you know it's human nature to get comfortable yeah, yeah and then i knew if i you know if i was in in new york i would just you know be hanging out with brazilians Definitely. and, Boston, and even, Florida, but, yeah, yeah. So when i when i actually arrived in denver and you know my host family did not know portuguese uh, after a while, through the program, uh, of course, there are Brazilians in Denver. Mm -hmm. I remember my um, coordinator uh, for my program saying, oh, I want to introduce you to so-and-so Brazilians. And I was like, wait a minute, let's wait three months. 
yeah. I did tell that and probably people didn't like me. Yeah. But I was like, it's okay. Yeah, I have a purpose here. You know, I want to exactly. stay here for one year. I want to learn English. Um, before that, I took English classes here in Brazil uh, before okay. I, I went. How long? Uh, I believe five years. Five years. A okay. little, maybe a little bit more. I think really? I started. I was fifteen, maybe sixteen years old when I so started. So you were good at English, or? I think, um, I thought back then mm -hmm. that I was better than I actually were when I got there. Really? <laughs> Does that make sense? Like I think I was confident enough. I'm like, oh, I, you know, I've learn English, I will go and it'll be fine. Okay. And but when, you could handle like a conversation like yeah. back and forth easily or not easily, but I want to say understand most of the phrases and stuff. I want to say 50%. 50? Okay. Maybe 60% when I got there. All right. And then uh, cuz I remember, you know, going out initially going out with just American people, mm -hmm. I would be translating. Okay. And that was which the part is which is yeah, yeah then everybody. you're always behind if you're translating. We now we know right, yeah. that you have to start thinking in English to carry it on a conversation. If you are, you know, translating, it there is a delay. You're going to take forever, you know, because you're going to be thinking like, okay, so you, you can't tell the person to wait, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, right. wait a minute, wait, let me process this, let me translate, Google, da, 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 da. okay, yeah, I'm fine, thanks, I'm worried. Yeah, yeah. Download, <laughs> yeah. download. Exactly. <laughs> now, and um, so I recall the first time I had a 45-minute conversation with my host mom. What? Like before 45, 45 minutes. Girl? Yeah, hello. hello. All right. <laughs> It was fun. It was a lot of fun, uh, but it was, you know, it was 45 minutes because it was kind of dragging, right? It was kind of trying to get to the point and pass information. It wasn't clear, and but I was, was really happy. The, like the mother? The, yes. Before, uh, you know, in preparation for my trip, uh, before that, you know, you get matched with the families, mm -hmm. then you, you know, pick your, initially you just uh, exchange emails. Once you close on the family, you start having more regular phone calls with the family, mm -hmm. right? But uh, yeah, that was like, I just wanted to be, I remember, I think of the month in preparation for going, I would listen to, there was a magazine, Speak Up. Do they still have that? Like with the CDs, I would go to the <coughs> Banca Giornais. I'm sorry, I don't know this word in English. The newsstand. Newsstand, newspaper stand. But do they have those over Newsstand. There? No, here. Oh, okay, In preparation, okay, okay, okay. I would... You know, I had those CDs. Um, I did a really good course. Uh, I my last was that from Professor Saulo Casala. <laughs> really good, huh? Really good. Okay. At the time, you were in the U.S. See? Oh yeah, that's right. I was learning English too. <laughs> and uh, so I could come back and teach you guys. Yeah, yeah. All right. You were the the brave one that took off from our neighborhood, and I think uh, I went. Two years after you? Four years? I went in 2000. So oh, four, four yeah, years. Four yeah. years after. Yeah. yeah. But you went to the East Coast and I went to Mountain East Town. Coast, baby. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it was, it was great. I, I, uh, and I've never moved. I'm still in Denver. 14 years. Yeah. yeah. If I were there, I think I would still be in Chicopee <laughs> too. Yeah. In the East Coast. Talking to Brazilians all day long. You know, <laughs> Brazilians in Hartford. Brazilians in Boston. Uh, but it's pretty impressive because your dad speaks in Portuguese, your mom moved also, yeah, you yeah. were very, you, the church you attended right. was in, in Portuguese and uh, so the your community was very Brazilian and you still yeah. speak English. Like Brazilian. during the day I would speak uh, English at work, For work you know, yeah. but at home I would speak Portuguese with my parents. Um, and then I used to also take night classes in, in college, so I, I, I used to speak English there too. But yeah, I had a lot of uh, <clears throat> Brazilians, you know, surrounding me, but I, I don't know, I guess like... You can know. go both options, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. even learned Spanish too. You know, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Vamos so, a hablar en español en yeah. el próximo video. Oh my God. Video? Yes. Video, yeah. En el próximo video. Because in America, if you don't learn English, you ended up like learning... Spanish, it's Spanish because there's a lot of the Spanish at least where I used to live yeah. there were a lot of Puerto Ricans that were like mm. the main 
of the Hispanic population was uh, Puerto Ricans. Right. Yeah, and it's pretty hard, the Puerto Ricans, how they speak is like they sing and it's pretty fast. It's very fast, just like the Dominicans. But the topic here is not Spanish. It's Spanish. Let's go In back the next, to English, yeah. once we open a <laughs> yeah. Spanish course. Right. No, but um, uh, it was uh, it was definitely a transition. Going back to the original question was, uh, did you think that your English was good enough, right, to move abroad? Right. It was, uh, I would say yes. Uh, I wasn't totally lost, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I was more lost than I thought I would be. I see. Meaning I, would, I wanted to hang out with people and, right, have conversation and... Um, you know, watch a movie yeah. from beginning to the end, and and it took me, I want to say, six months. Yeah. It took me six months when you know how I know because I had a dream in English. Oh. I had a dream in English. Nice. Yeah. And I woke up and I remember I told my host speaking English in English. Just... Yeah. I the whole dream was in English, and I woke up and I told my host mom I know English, and it's like, yeah, you've been speaking English. No, it's like I was like, no. Now I can I can say to myself that I know English and it's like why are you saying yeah. that now cuz we speak with you in English every day for 6 months and I'm like because I had a dream in English and now I'm thinking in English yeah. I'm doing I'm not doing the translation anymore yeah. and sometimes you don't realize how good you are and how uh, how far you went with the language because you think like I'm not you know getting any better blah 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 right but then uh, but then People around you see that, they can notice that that difference. And right. then you go like, oh my God, yeah. If you could look back, if you could look like take a videotape and put yourself right. and see like five years before, you would be like, oh my God, I, I knew nothing, you know? Because right. I, I was pretty embarrassed to go to like uh, parties with my cousins to like their friends and whatever. So I used to get there. I was the only Brazilian, the only person that could speak a, a different language or the only language she could speak. <laughs> And people used to come up to me and, you know, say all these stories, tell me stories and jokes. And I'd be like, <laughs> just laugh, smile and and agree with everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So but in, in a way, it was good to me because it, it like forced me yes. to to speak, to to say something, right. to try to understand in order to reply or so it was all good things. I remember in college, I used to go to like in front of class and do a speech, uh, train or or. There was like a, a job we had to do with that was to like you have to teach somebody something like mm -hmm. teach your class something so everybody used to bring something like a recipe from uh, like a cake anything you know so i taught people how to tune in the guitar it was like oh my oh, god it was wow. so hard yeah so i had to go in front of like 50 americans and teach them something so but like i said all these things help me, yes, you know, yes. uh, to learn English faster because you guys have to, you can't just hide, you know, if you want to learn the language, you can't just hide from it. Right. You not, have to face it. Right. Not know? be afraid of making mistakes. Like At all. acknowledge, be certain that you will make mistakes. Yeah. That is the, you, you know, that's going to happen. And people are actually far more friendly right uh in terms of you know accents or if you you know uh speak something incorrectly and i used to tell my my host mom and i i asked her i'm like please every time i say something wrong please correct me because also some people don't want to correct yeah. you because they feel they're going to embarrass you but i True. everybody not just her like as i would go out where are you from i'm from brazil and trying to speak english i'm like you can correct me. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And that's how I learned. You learn from your mistakes. Yeah. And, and talking to people, yes. you know, listening, you have to listen to people a lot because that's how kids learn a language, not just English, but Portuguese, any language, you know, they're, they, they live with their parents all day long, you know, every day. So, so to us, it was the same thing. We used to live in a place where they spoke a different language than what you were used to. So at work was English, in school was English, just at home, you know, that I used to speak, not, you know, you, but to me it was different, you know, at home I used to speak Portuguese. But uh, I remember working with this guy, Jason, never forget his name, he, he used to teach me like every day, because I used to work overnight right. with this guy, just me and him, all night long. Wow. So it was awesome, because it was every day there was an English class, right. you know, so I used to ask him everything, like, how do you say this? So did I say it right? 
So, and he was very patient and very kind. Uh, but I remember sometimes we were like, you know, falling behind at work. So he used to go like, hey, no, no, no English class today. I'm like, oh, please, man, just that one question. <laughs> so I was like, no, Let's Sal. Let's work. Yes. And they used to call me Sal. Sal. S-A-L. Oh. Like, Sal. Yeah, because it was easier to them. Sal. Yeah. yeah. I used to say like, my name is Solo. And they were like, what? Sol. No, name like, is Sol. Yeah, because there's Paul and right, Sol, Sol, which is actually my brother's name, Paul. But, um, but it's not Saul, you know, it's Saulu. So I used to say like, uh, yeah, Saulu. And they used to go like, Saul? Like a solo, like you're singing, like which solo. you are a singer. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to say Saulo. So this guy gave me this name, like Sal. Your name from now on is going to be Sal. Sal. So, wow. so I, I got really used to Sal, you know, so people, all of my friends in school, at work, used to call me Sal. So if somebody called me Saulu, I would be like, I wouldn't even look because like, who, You're who's Saulu? You're just Solid? so used to I think to he's it. calling you over there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was very used to Sal. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But, so, all right. So you went there in 2004. You spent a whole year. Uh-huh. You came back to Brazil. No. You I stayed. transferred. Yeah, I, tra I was able to transfer to, I got my credits from college here. Okay. Transferred to the university there. Oh, cool. And um, I graduated in journalism. Journalism. Yeah. And right. then after that, you know, got a job and another job. And it's been 14 years. 14 years. Yeah, I came back in 2013. And um, I decided that I have two homes. And I like it, it's very difficult, I feel like, after you live abroad, regardless where you go, you your heart becomes divided. You make, right. you, make you create bonds right you have bonds here i have bonds here family friends yeah. and i have now you know family friends there right so it's kind of divided it's the good and bad so you've been back and forth ever since not back and forth meaning like living here yeah just like for visiting and stuff yeah, like, yeah so i try vacation. to come yeah i try to come once a year and i i have two boys now so um it's been challenging with the whole bilingual education okay because it is really a matter of uh your brain, you, you think, right? You think in a language or the other language. If you translate, you delay. <laughs> I see. That's right? A good one. It's like That's you a good have one. the, you can only do one thing well at a time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, well, I do that with my mom sometimes. Like I'm right here, right, in a phone call doing work, something. And then my mom calls and I'm like, hello, mom. It's like, Hey, it's so my mom. It's your mom. So am I. No following glitz. <laughs> oh, with the language thing and not like multitask you're saying, just like with the language. You... With the language, yeah. Because okay. you, you switch. I don't know how it works in the brain, but yeah. you, you, because you're not translating it. At, at our point, we're not translating anymore. You're thinking yeah. in English or Portuguese or Spanish or another right. language. Um, we can go back and forth quickly, mm -hmm. but you do you don't translate anymore. No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, that comes naturally. You don't, yeah. you don't have to force it. That just comes yeah, naturally. Yeah, it just comes. Yeah. <clears throat> right. All right. So uh, for that whole year that you spent with that family, mm -hmm. so your English just like... So I used to go to an English class also. So... Um, oh, really? A, a for English? English like yeah. With grammar and all that stuff? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. English school while you were living with the family right all right yeah okay so after that year you I then you, I moved you can on my say own. that you got your English got a lot better a lot better a lot better yes. all right so and, and throughout that whole year you didn't have any connections with Brazilians I had like your mother no I had uh, I think after two three months then I started you know okay. going out with the Brazilian community in Denver okay. yeah cool. all right. it's, it's fun you right. can stay away from Brazil, right? Yeah. <laughs> Brazilian are the best. Yeah, but you Brazilian like the conversation, the experiences, um, like were the best tool for you to learn English, or you consider like this the traditional school or the school in the U.S. too, not only the one in Brazil, or it, like it's a mixture. It's of a mixture. I think uh, it did. It did help to. Like you went to college and you had to be forced to go in right. front of people, make presentations. I think that too, I had to write papers, right, for mm -hmm. school in English. So the grammar is important, otherwise you won't pass the class. Right. So school was really important, but I think um, the, the, the living, right, the day-to-day, -day, you really learn by this, right, by, right. by having friends. 
But um, the cool thing, right, uh, to live uh, in the U.S. is you meet people from all over the world. True. So you get also to train and listen um, different accents. So I have friends from Africa, from uh, India, from Europe, from yeah, other places, in, you know, other countries in South America. So it's really, it opens up a lot of opportunities and you really can't meet somebody until you speak their language. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Like to really be friends with them. Makes sense. Communicate, exchange things and... So it's a mix. I don't think uh, you can, you, you know, all go, you know, if you go abroad, don't be friends with Brazilians. No, I mean, you're a good example. But I think if you, the, mo the more you can immerse in the culture, the, the better. Definitely. Yeah. Did you know any, like, Brazilians that could speak, like, the street English, but could not write anything? Right. That's very common, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. They learn how to communicate, you know, because at work they need English. Just like we need English here in Brazil too, but they need more there. But uh, they just don't care at all about how to to write. They don't care about grammar, how the, how things are structured, how thing how you write certain words. Um, like I never went to a grammar like English school, mm -hmm. like an English school, a traditional English English school. I learned my English like like that, talking to people, listening to people, talking back and forth and stuff like that. But I always liked Portuguese. And I was always a good student a of Portuguese. Portuguese, so I always try to apply Portuguese into English, which in most cases you can't, you know, it's not going to work, it's not going to fit, but um, for a lot of things you can. You know, it's the same thing like subject, verb, object, complement, yada, yada, yada. Right. But, um, but I always try to, like, study myself at home. I used to open a book and try to study nice. grammar. And when I was in college, too, like, I was so behind because Why? I used to take forever to read a paragraph. Because I, uh, I would not go forward if I didn't understand that paragraph uh, entirely. the grammar. Yeah, the grammar. I used uh -huh. to, and even, like, the translation, every word, like, mm -hmm. the, the, what does that word mean? Mm -hmm. So I used to have a dictionary mm -hmm. next to the book and stuff like that. So I used to take forever to study, but it worked out. But that also helped me. Yeah. yeah. Uh. I don't know if you used to do this, but in, uh, for the dictionary, I actually had an English dictionary, okay. not a you know oh, Portuguese okay. English, mm -hmm. because uh, what I and I believe this was my suggestion from my host mom, because she was an English teacher, and she's like, it will increase your vocabulary. If That's you, a really good idea, yeah, guys. If you increase increase your if you don't know a word, don't look for the translation in Portuguese. Look for a synonym. Right, right. So, a description in English. In English. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, I like to read. So in the even in the beginning, I would if you look at my books from two thousand and four, um, regular books, not everywhere. you know school books, the school books too. But Text I would books. have textbooks. Um, I would have most of the, the like you understand, like you, I wanted to understand what's the meaning of this yeah. word. I couldn't understand the sentence. I'm like, I know what they're saying, but over time I'm like, no, I want to know what that word means. So I would highlight it and then under, you know, at the, what is it, at the bottom of the book, <clears throat> I would have the synonym. Of the oh, book. Okay. I still do that. I have a book really? in my purse. I still do that. Yeah, Some I words. used to also have a, a, a notebook where like the, the last pages I used to write the translation for every word. I mean, the bad thing about that is be, it was because it was not in alphabetical order oh, because yeah. it was just like writing words. But just uh, for the fact that you wrote that word right chances are that you're going to remember yes. you know the word the translation so it's always good to write it right it's always good to say it out loud right, right. to yourself because you're going to remember it and not just like listen it listen to it and just like let it go all right but the big question is do you uh -oh. think that you have to live abroad in order to speak fluently like not only fluently but like a native no but I think you need to be surrounded. But it helps though, right? It, it helps. helps a lot. It helps. Yeah. But, but the reason is, I believe to learn another language, you need to be surrounded by it. So no, what's the be best way to be surrounded by living? Right. Yeah. Because here, it, you know, unless you work with English, mm -hmm. in, you know, somehow, 
um, and then watch TV in yeah. English. Uh, how to be surrounded? Yeah, we can't be always surrounded by English here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can, but who does that? Yeah, you know, who it's wants to do that? It's almost because yeah. TV is, on, is in Portuguese. You're not going to watch a movie yeah. all day long every day, right? Yeah. Uh, only 5% of our population speaks English. Yeah. So who are you going to speak English with? Right. You know, you can read, you can try everything, but you have to try something, right? right? You have to try something. Uh, like the more you can just stay like involved with the, with the language. Right. All right. Because it's hard. Like to me, especially like I came back in 2012 and since then, like I haven't really had conversations with natives like every day you know mm -hmm. so i teach english yes i talk uh, to some some of my students in english like the advanced students we have conversation classes but like we talk we talked about that earlier like i'm not getting anything from them not, it's not that i'm not getting anything no the in language new, you yeah know? in terms of vocabulary in terms yeah of some of the expressions, expressions i used to use every day there i don't use anymore you know, that's me, guys. I'm a I'm an English teacher, right? So imagine like somebody who's trying to learn English because to me, as an English teacher, like I feel like I don't speak I don't speak English like I used to when I was living in the U.S. Yeah, it's right. not like I forgot English. I will always know yeah, how to speak English, course. but it's not the same. I can tell you, it's not the same. Why? Because I don't speak English every day, and that's just a, yeah. a given. It, yeah. It's just it's gonna happen. You know, so so back to the question: Do you need to live abroad? I mean, you don't have to, but it's easier, <laughs> right? It's faster. It's easier. It's faster. You know, and and the benefit also of living abroad doesn't need to be long term. Is your mind opens? You learn about a different culture. You learn about mm -hmm. you know their different ways of doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. So you have like no problems at all, right? Talking to somebody in English in the US, right? And I, they have no problems listening to you and understanding what you say, right? Yeah, and over, I mean, sometimes there's, uh, I don't like the TH words, they're hard for me. Okay. <laughs> Third. You know, everyone, because it's not thro part of thro our language. Thoroughly, thoroughly, that's hard for me yeah, still. I think everybody has, even, even the native, like the yeah. people who speak English since they were born, they still have the ones that they are hard to pronounce mm -hmm. you know it's uh, like even in portuguese we have some words in portuguese that we 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 it's have tough. trouble you know pronouncing it yeah but um do they uh do they sometimes ask you like are you like what you're brazilian yeah you get the, those I, reactions sometimes i get sometimes? i get yeah sometimes like oh wow you speak no some people's like wow you speak so well and some people are like I can hear an accent where are you from like i, I can i get that and i don't feel offended at all right. And people are like, don't lose your accent. It's really pretty. Right. And I say that because some people don't want to, right? They're like, I want... To. Well, of course, there are some accents. They're very heavy. That's... I think that's yeah. good to yeah. to lose because it becomes difficult for the other person to, to understand. understand. <clears throat> but uh, if you're pronouncing it correctly, I think accents is just like, you know, people from Minas have a different accent exactly. than people from Rio. Yeah. And to me, it's funny also because like... If I spend like a week in the U.S., it comes back. And you my come English with that. And you come with no, that. No, like my, the English comes back, like the good, good English, like the one I was used to. It comes back. Or if I talk to, uh, like to you, if I talk to like a native, it comes back. It's just like you know somebody that's from Bahia, right? Uh, goes and like moves to Rio Grande do Sul, for example, and starts speaking like the Rio Grande do Sul people. And then they see a boy, uh, somebody from Bahia again, like some, like a friend or something, right. and they, they start talking like a, uh, a baiano. Let's say that bai, baian, I don't know, a baiano again. So I sometimes I need that. I need that injection, that English injection, you know, in me. I'll so, come talk to you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, introduce you to my friends there. Well, you still have friends there. Oh, yeah. Call them Cousins every day. and all that, yeah. yeah. But, uh, sometimes I'm like, what am I going to say? Like, hey. Hey, you want to practice English with yeah, me? Yeah, you want to chat? Yeah. <laughs> no, so it's really beneficial if you get to listen to songs, watch movies, um, you know, TV yeah. series, read books, read books. Right. I think um, there's audiobook also audiobook is awesome guys because you hear all the connected speech the way they connect words 
especially if you get like, mm -hmm. like for example like we say Americans because you know we used to live in the US or she still lives there but listen to like a real American person speaking mm -hmm. you know so because they like to uh, they like to connect uh, the words you know they're not gonna say just like what are you doing it's like yeah. what are you doing right you know, how you been it's not like how have you been it's just like how you been yeah I'm good you know anyway gotta go you gotta go all these things so try to right. to practice practice your listening uh, if you can't uh, travel abroad if you can't live abroad right guys there's no other way you just have to be surrounded by it and nowadays it's I think it's much easier when we went, there was no WhatsApp. There was <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I, nowadays I everything went, guys, is online. We had ICQ. Oh, I uh -oh. remember that. Oh my God. I had that when I was there. <laughs> uh -oh. I had I ICQ and then MSN. Yes. And then, yeah. But now it's like WhatsApp. They have. I used to call my mom with those phone cards, remember? Yeah, phone cards. Yeah. Yeah. Right. To call abroad, you mean? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Calling cards. Calling yeah. cards, yeah. So now it's like you have you have like a, you have apps. You can make a <laughs> video call in seconds, you know, oh, and it's yeah. pretty fast. So yeah, nowadays it's a lot easier to learn English. In any easier. other language, right? Any other language. Yeah. So if you like the way we speak English, I mean, it, it was possible for us. Right. It's possible for everybody. Uh, you just have to really. Uh, set your mind and go after it, right? Yeah. I think it's really that, like uh, wanting to. Right. Some people, they're like, oh, I want to learn English, but they really don't want to. <laughs> they really don't. Like, they could come to class, like, with yeah. no paper, no pen, no questions. Like, yeah. why would you not ask a question? Like, I had a lot of questions when I, when I was learning English. And don't be afraid to ask. Don't be shy or anything like that, because just that, that just prevents you. Or um, you're just going to take longer right. to learn. Yeah. yeah, I mean, be really determined. Like, I will learn. It's if you if you believe it's possible, it's halfway there. All right, guys. So on that note, unfortunately, we're gonna have to end this video. Oh. Yeah, we could be talking here for days, guys. Literally. Me and Patricia, we can talk. I'll <laughs> tell you. But I hope you guys learned something based on our shared experiences with you guys. Although we didn't share it, not even half of what we went through right. and what you guys go through also so i hope you guys like this video patricia thank you very much for being thank here thank you so much for having me solo thanks this a was lot awesome it was nice it i was appreciate nice. it i hope we can do this again yeah so guys if you like this video but before i actually end this patricia why don't you give them your address your tech festa website sure. and everything your thanks. social media yeah so uh on instagram you can follow me on uh, at tech festive online and my website is techfesta.com. No BR. No BR, guys. Just techfesta.com. Right. Right? If you're interested in learning more about apps, and if you have an idea for an app, <laughs> click on the link that's in the description right here. All right? So if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to this channel. All right? So I'll see you guys on our next class. Bye. See ya.